Well, originally I started painting because of my music. Um, my whole, the, you know, my whole, my whole kind of foray into the art world was what does my musical piece look like? I wanted to see what a certain piece of music looked like. Um, and so the first piece I did, uh, you know, was a representation of a musical composition I had done on piano. And I even put in the musical clefs and the notes using uh, clocks without arms and stuff like that and then painted the whole thing and it's one of those things where when when you you're an artist as far as a musician but you're not a visual artist and suddenly you make a piece of visual art you stand in front of it and you're like is this shit or is it good you know and it just be, and and I really liked it and I and I and I looked at it and I'm like wow that's really really unique just from a, a as as objective as I can be as an art you know as as a, as an eye and I'm like, that's really interesting, that's really unique. And the whole idea of musically composed paintings is something that I've been interested in for a long time uh, as an artist. You know, I've, I've always wanted to go to an exhibition, put on headphones and listen to pieces of uh, music, you know, just like films. You know, films have a, a lot of compositions. I work on films, obviously, music, I, I work on composing for films, but um, paintings to me are the same thing you know they're not moving visuals but if you really really look into them you can see them moving um, especially with music um, so so we started doing that along with an app that allows for optical recognition and you know listening to the music and and it became an adventure years ago people uh, I remember a journalist asked me how would you describe system of a down's music and without really thinking just intuitively I, I think I said something like uh, it's like a violent violin in the middle of a windstorm you know which makes total sense because the wind would be propelling the uh, bow of the violin and it would be a very violent kind of musical entropy if you will so that got me you know a lot of the things I've said in the past that are uh, kind of uh, poetic quotes or things like that are have been kind of marked in my mind so when I had the opportunity to create visual ideas from them I was able to now the particular violin that I used is I got from Armenia years ago and uh, I was at the airport and they wouldn't let me take it out of the country it wasn't an expensive violin or anything it was it was just uh, uh, probably a student violin or something like that but at the time, I faked my way that I could play the violin so that I can prove that it was my violin and I could take it out of the country. <laughs> um, because I just wanted a, a musical element from Armenia, I'm culturally Armenian, uh, to hang on to. And then years later, I painted it white and stabbed it with its own bow so that the blood would spurt out of it. it I might have been watching Dexter a lot on, on telly, but um, you know, it, it just the idea of a violent violin it's it's not it's kind of like uh i like finding opposite meanings in things you know so a violin you usually tend to correlate with very uh beautiful setting classical music uh sweeping kind of vibe uh pretty you know um i wanted it to be ugly and and notorious and 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 destitute and so it was it was trying to find the reverse definition in an item uh, in an artistic sense. Um. I think, look, where we come from, our genetics, our, our blood, uh, always have a bearing on, you know, what we do, how we do things, irrespective of where we live, how we live. Um, I think I'm, I'm very grateful and lucky to have been educated by my travels around the world, um, from touring with my band as a solo artist, etc., to be able to, uh, you know, live in New Zealand, to be able to li live in the States and uh, spend time in Armenia, spend time in Europe. Um, all of it kind of uh, adds color to my palette as a person, as an artist. Um, but my cultural beginnings 
uh, have a unique kind of representation. I always say, I always think that the most beautiful thing about uh, you know different countries aren't the borders, the flags, the the GDP, nor the you know military might. It is the culture of those people. It's what makes us different. That's what that is. What's beautiful. It also makes us alike. You know, the food, the art, the music, the uh, you know all of the cultural aspects that are really interesting. Um, it, it, it's what defines, it, it's, it's the beauty of life, it's the spice of life, it's the color of this planet as far as humanity. And so I think my Armenian culture brings some of that, um, especially into the West where it's not, very, not a familiar culture in the West. Years, uh, so in 2000, 2015 was the uh, 100th year commemoration of the genocide of Armenians, Greeks, and Assyrians committed by the Ottoman Empire in 1915 during World War I. Um, it's, April 24 is marked as the day when the uh, genocide began, a day before Anzac uh, forces landed in Gallipoli. And there's definitely a correlation, obviously, as we know. Um, uh, so in 2015, a good friend of mine, composer, Kiwi composer, John Pesathis, who I've worked with before, uh, who together we did the Elected at Symphony years ago with the Auckland Philharmonia Orchestra. Um, he, contacted, he contacted me and he said, let's do a really cool piece, musical piece for the 100th uh, commemoration of the genocide. And I'm like, what a fantastic idea. So we started collaborating and we wrote this piece called 100 Years, a composition called 100 Years. And... Uh, and so we were, uh, I was in New Zealand, so we had the musical piece and we premiered it with a video for the commemoration in 2015. I was in New Zealand and I had other artist friends here and uh, they were, you know, we were talking about the genocide and we were talking about some of the uh, issues surrounding it. And one of them reminded me of Adolf Hitler's quote, say in 1939, right before uh, the Nazis invaded Poland. He had a uh, briefing of his generals and, and he was trying to tell them that it's okay to act with impunity because history forgets. And he used the phrase, uh, today, who remembers the Armenians? In other words, in World War I, you know, the government of Turkey, the Ottoman Empire at the time, committed this atrocity, this genocide. And yet, who remembers them now? It doesn't matter. Let's do this kind of thing. So I thought it was, uh, so I wanted to link the 100 years musical piece to this uh, quote. And so all I did was basically write the quote and then spray around it, spray paint around it so that the quote is centered on a large canvas and then put a drop of blood with the signature of, you know, Adolf Hitler, 1939. So, and, and it's been a piece that has had a lot of uh, conversations because it is, you know, it's not a comfortable piece. Um, it's a, not many people may, would, would hang that piece on their wall because it's an Adolf Hitler quote after all. But what it's trying to say is that if we're not careful, history is gonna repeat itself that, you know, and, and that we're seeing those things now. We're seeing genocide in the world now. Um, the, uh, what ISIS did in the Derzor Desert, for example, in Syria is, is definitely genocide. And that's, that's exactly where my ancestors are buried in the same desert, so bones above bones, if you can see that visually. Um, so, and then that led me to, to think, hey, this could be an interesting dark, obviously, series. So I start, I did a piece of uh, uh, another piece called Pol Pot, based on a quote that the Cambodian Khmer Rouge leader, Pol Pot, um, had said uh, to his people during the uh, atrocities there in the 1970s. Um, so I may do a few more of those pieces. But again, you know, it's, it's about communicating something. Art, art, there's many types of art, there's many types of music, and some of it is just made to be ambiance um, or to make us feel good or to enhance our mood in one direction or another. But I generally gravitate toward films, music, art that has a very concrete meaning that, that makes you feel something, even if it's revulsion, even if it's, you know, 
not a ne necessarily a positive thing. Because I think that it serves more than one purpose then. Just like the music and the art coming together, serving more than one purpose. So music is a doorway to the truth. The quote itself is, you know, something that I've that I've uh, thought about extensively over the years because it's kind of a trajectory of my musical career and my activism, you know, wrapped into one. Uh, we're actually making a film called, tentatively called Truth to Power, based on, you know, that concept and based on things that I've shot over the years in my life um, that we're gonna, you know, take to film festivals in the in the coming year, um, but. So the, the, the whole thing started with, we had this bedpost, the giant bedpost behind one of the beds, and it had these um, de detachable little pillow cases kind of things. They're really pretty with Velcro in, in them, and, and it's been in the garage for a while. And I'm, I've been looking at it going, I gotta do something with this. And then one day it just hit me. I had, I had a few hours and I put it on the easel and I looked at it and I looked at it and I had gotten all these masks from uh, uh, the, uh, one of the uh, emporiums, uh, one of the art shops, and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be crazy if faces start coming out of this, almost like a Game of Thrones thing, you know, from the huge uh, column. And, and, and it's just one of those things where you're just sitting there going, that would be wicked. So I started painting these masks and putting them on and then writing quotes and painting that. And then I thought it would be awesome if this whole thing was modular, uh, almost like a synthesizer where you can plug and play and change the sound. So I started using the pillows that would be Velcroed on top of each kind of quadrant of the uh, bed post, back, back bed post, whatever it's called. Um, and so you can, whatever quote you like, you can leave exposed, whatever you don't like, you can cover with another quote. So you can actually, it's interactive. And it's, it, is, it is kind of funny and it's, it's not for everyone, <laughs> I gotta say. But I can, I can definitely see that in a nice, um, kind of like a wacky restaurant or kind of like a sawmill type of place up, you know, in Lee where, you know, you have, you again, it's making statements, but it's also very colorful and very quiche in a, quiche in a way. Uh, so it, it's interesting. That's, that's what came out of me well, for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm passionate about a lot of things. Um, I, I, whatever kind of wakes up within me that becomes my vision that 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 I feel like I need to accomplish whether it's building a fence or you know on the farm or making a painting or, or writing a musical composition you know or scoring a film or or, or activism based stuff like uh, you know injustice uh, is always what makes my blood boil you know um, when I uh, you know Speaking of the genocide, it, it's a huge injustice that hasn't been rectified by the modern government of Turkey and, and their role and their, you know, um, their admitting it, of it. So that kind of injustice led me to kind of seeing what other truths are there out there that are, that are minimized or hidden under, under the carpet because of political expediency or, men, or, or economic uh, reasons or, or, you know, uh, governments, uh, are a lot of governments, institutionalized organizations, by definition, are corrupt. And so, you know, we as human beings, and especially as artists, we need to be sensitive to uh, the plight of everything, you know, from the environment to our fellow man, to animals, to, you know, it's, it's you know, if we're going to be alive and if we're going to be connected to everything, then we, we can't help but to feel for it all, I guess is what I'm saying. So, that's what makes my blood boil. My blood, hypocrisy and justice is something that's always made my blood boil. The art is an extension of the, uh, of the artist, you know? And, and to me, obviously I'm known for doing rock songs and performing and, and all of that with System of a Down on my own, work with orchestras, do film scoring and stuff. And to me, art is this unique uh, expression that I can't get out in any other way. When I first started painting, uh, I felt that same experimental, lost in time feeling that I felt when I first picked up a guitar and started playing piano, um, you know, 25 years ago or whatever. And 
to me, uh, getting my messages across in different ways is, is very important. It's, it's that expression and it's a unique form of expression. So what I can do through classical music, I can't do through rock. What I, what I can do through rock, I can't do through jazz. What I, how I express myself through my paintings, I can't express in any other way.